Hello. I'd like to welcome you to the first of many uh, webinars that we plan on presenting um, uh, by the College of Business Administration of Bowling Green State University. Uh, the first of uh, these is going to be on uh, the method of extracting natural gas known as hydraulic fracturing or better known as fracking. This is uh, a big deal now because um, it's uh, been tried in Pennsylvania with some success and we're different people are looking to expand that into Ohio so we thought we'd uh, do a little bit on that and uh, let you know what was going on. Now in the College of Business Administration we know that we don't know everything so we're I'm going to start out by appealing to an authority that does know everything. Um, his name is Dr. Charlie Onash. He's a geologist and uh, he is well versed in this uh, sort of thing and without further ado I'll turn it over to him. Thank you Pete. Uh, well, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about the process of uh, fracking and then also talk about some of the environmental issues associated with that. Well fracking as you said is short for hydraulic fracturing and this is a process that's been used in the oil industry for uh, probably over 50 years to enhance the recovery of oil and natural gas from uh, wells. It consists of sealing off a well and pumping a fluid that consists of water, sand, and a variety of other chemicals uh, down the well under high pressure. Uh, eventually, the pressure is sufficient to overcome the strength of a rock, which causes fractures to form, and they propagate out into the rock around the well. When the fluid is withdrawn, the uh, fractures remain open because the sand uh, is still in place and this allows oil and natural gas to flow back into the well and then back up to the, the surface. In the old days, uh, fracking was done by dumping explosives, dynamite or, natural or nitroglycerin down the well and uh, detonating those. Unfortunately, this uncontrolled process resulted in the destruction of as many wells as it actually uh, helped. Today, with uh, fluids and very high pressure pumps, we're able to control this and, and uh, efficiently improve the, the production of a well. Now, fracking is often used in conjunction with horizontal drilling. Horizontal drilling is where a vertical well uh, is drilled until you hit the target horizon and then the driller turns the drill bit and runs it horizontally within the well for distances up to several miles. This greatly expands the amount of rock containing oil or gas that uh, is in contact with the well and hence, and hence enhances your uh, production. Now the, the fracking process has uh, been used in a number of places, but in shales, which have very low permeability, it's a relatively new process. If we can look at the map, we can see that the Utica Shale and the Marcellus both occur in uh, Ohio, in the eastern part of Ohio, with the Utica Shale much more extensively developed than the, the Marcellus. Now there is some interest in the Marcellus for gas uh, uh, because it is relatively shallow. It's at about 3,000 feet of depth, whereas the Utica Shale is 6,000 to 7,000 feet. But really the target in Ohio is the Utica Shale because it contains wet gas. And wet gas is natural gas that contains a variety of other liquid hydrocarbons that are used in a number of different industrial processes such as the production of gasoline and plastics. Now there are a number of environmental concerns associated with fracking. As, as you alluded to, it's a very controversial process and we should talk a little bit about uh, the environmental side. Uh, probably the biggest concern associated with fracking is the contamination of groundwater drinking supplies, uh, either by natural gas or by the drilling fluids. And these drilling fluids do contain uh, certain amounts of carcinogenic uh, compounds in, in some cases. Uh, this contamination can occur in a couple of ways. Uh, the most uh, important way probably would be leakage through an improperly designed well during the fracking process, allowing the gas or the drilling fluids to contaminate the groundwater. Another way that contamination can occur is uh, through uh, the uh, holding ponds that are constructed at the surface to uh, store the drilling fluids. They can either leak or overflow. Another environmental concern is the uh, producing earthquakes by pumping fluids under high pressure into the ground, either in the well that's being fracked or in wells that are being used to dispose of the drilling fluids. Uh, fluids under high pressure can reduce the 
uh, friction on a fault if the well happens to intersect one, which could allow the fault to slip. There have been some documented cases where these high pressure fluids have induced uh, earthquakes. Finally, some other environmental concerns would, would include the uh, great increase in truck traffic during the construction uh, of the well site and the drilling of the wells, uh, destruction of wildlife habitat and ecosystems, and the withdrawal of vast amounts of surface or groundwater that's used in the production of the, of the wells. So uh, drilling of these wells is controlled entirely by making money, and if they didn't make money, they wouldn't be drilling the wells. So really economics plays a major role here. So I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the economic side of things. Thank you. <clears throat> That's a very nice segue because uh, that is my job here. I'm an economist. And as you might imagine, the, we're, uh, uh, one of the things economists do is focus on the costs and the benefits of, uh, of an activity, and this one's no exception. Some of the largest costs are in the acquisition and leasing of the land. Another big cost is the vertical drilling, but that's exceeded by the horizontal drilling. And then about a third of the cost is really on the uh, fracturing, the pumping down of the of the fluid and uh, the perforating of the well. And so if you if you compare a standard well to a, to a, a fracking well, they're about, the fracking well is about 50% more costly. We're moving to the revenues. Every well is different. They really don't know how productive they're going to be. But I went with uh, studies that show on average about 1.3 million cubic feet production per day. The wellhead price is only $2.25 per thousand cubic feet. That's actually the latest price that the Energy Information Service for the government has, and that's the lowest it's been in about 10 years. Lifespan of the well is important in this study. I went with sort of an intermediate range of 11, and I used a, a 3% a discount rate. Now, given that, the present value of that comes out to be, uh, depending on the assumptions, about 9 or $10 million. Compare that to the $7.5 million cost, and you can see you're going to be up about $2 million on one of these things, which explains why they're so popular among those, uh, those companies. They really have a, a, a fairly substantial profit margin, and that's with the lower natural gas price that we've been ex, um, experiencing lately. This process has really um, done a couple of things to the market for natural gas. First, uh, this is roughly over the last three or four years, and the production of natural gas has gone up, over these three years, despite the fact that we um, have, have had a recession. And then the price of natural gas has very dramatically come down. Um, undoubtedly, some of this is due to the recession, probably the, the big dip um, in 2009. But you can see the general trend is actually very much down. And so it's become uh, very much cheaper, probably about 25% of what it was at its peak. What I would expect, and I think you're already seeing in the economy, is a lot of substitution um, to natural gas and away from some other things. First of all, um, electricity generators are very um, enthusiastic about natural gas. Um, first off, it's, uh, it's become cheaper. Natural gas plants are quite smaller than coal plants and they don't run into the NIMBY problem nearly as much. And another thing is, is that if you're a utility and you're looking at the, this change in prices, as well as a more activist uh, EPA that's putting in some uh, rules uh, regarding new coal plants, it's, uh, I think you have to take a strong look at uh, going with natural gas rather than coal. These Utica shales uh, really um, deliver not only natural gas, but but also some liquids that can be refined into things that replace foreign oil. I think farther down the road, we can think about more exotic things. Um, it's possible to run an automobile on compressed natural gas. Even more exotic than that, people make uh, hydrogen out of natural gas. It's a, it's a very good fuel stock for um, con conversion in that respect. And so people that uh, advocate fuel cells rather than conventional um, energy sources um, should take some heart in this uh, dramatic drop in natural gas prices. That's about all the economics um, I have to, to talk about. Um, I'd like to thank you for listening to us. We hope that uh, we have more than just this one. 
Um, and so if, if they do exist, please feel free to click on the second one of uh, this the uh, series and hopefully many more. Um, again, I'm Peter Vanderhart of the uh, Economics Department of Bowling Green State University. I've been joined by uh, Charlie Onash, I'm a geologist with Bowling Green State University, and we've been very happy to talk with you today.